In this video, we will learn how to draw different shear forms of cyclohexane and identify which one is more stable. And we will also answer some questions about how to figure out whether the shear is chiral and if the forms are identical in enteromeric or diastereomeric. So let's begin. This question is asking us to draw cis and trans 1 chloro 3 fluoro cyclohexane. So let's start with cis form. First, what we can do is we can draw the planar version. So we will draw our cyclohexane. We will number any way we want. I'm going to number this way. And it says that we have one chloro, three fluoro. So we have chlorine on carbon number one and fluorine on carbon number three. Now, if the question asks about cis, cis means same side. So we will put both substituents, either both wedged or both dash. So for cis, we will either put both substituents dash or we will put both substituent wedge. We will go ahead and I'm going to choose to put, put both of them wedged. So I'm going to put a wedge for chlorine and a wedge for fluorine. Next, we are going to draw its chair form. To draw a chair, we draw two parallel lines. Then we draw two other parallel lines overlapping one another. And then we finish. Now that our chair is ready, we're going to number our chair. We can number any way, but I always number starting from this carbon as carbon number one. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, and six. And before we put the substituents on, I'm just going to show you um, how to draw a chair with its substituents so you do not get confused. So again, we draw two parallel lines and then we finish. And here's what we do, and I'm going to use a different color. Let's use blue. We're going to go like this, up, down, up, down, up and down so when we see a vertical line that means our substituent is called axial next we're going to draw our other substituents so this is up and we have to draw our other substituent down and it has to be parallel to this line so we will draw it this is down this is down our next substituent is up, parallel to this line, up. This is up, we will draw down, parallel to this line, down, up. And you can see whatever is higher is up and whatever is lower is down, but I'm also trying to make it more clear by writing it out. This is down, our up will be parallel to this line, up, and this is up. And our down is going to be parallel to that line. So this is up, down, and we're almost done. And this is down, and our up is going to be parallel to this line. This is up. Okay. Now we can come back to our problem. Another thing that we need to know is that if we draw a wedge, um, it's going to be considered up. And if we draw a dash, it's going to be considered down. So now we can, now with all of this knowledge, we can do our problem. My chlorine on number one is up. So I look here and I see up is straight up. I forgot to say that if the substituent is diagonal, these positions are called equatorial. Okay, so back to the problem. Chlorine is up on problem one. So I'm going to put chlorine straight up. And on number three, my fluorine is also up. So we can see that on carbon number three up is straight up as well. So I'm going to put fluorine straight up. Next, I'm going to show you how to draw the ring flip, which is the different chair. So uh, my chair can flip. And let's go back to our original color. I think it was this one. To so draw a ring flip, 
Let's do the same thing, but we will draw two parallel lines, but parallel in the other direction. And then we will draw two overlapping parallel lines again, and we will close. And that's my ring flip. And it's important to know that when you number your ring flip, you will start one carbon away. So I start here, one. That's very, very important. One, two, three, four, five, and six. I need to be consistent with my substituents, whether they're up or down. So my chlorine was up in the chair, in, in the chair on the left. It has to be also up in its a flipped version. So I'm going to draw up. However, on this carbon, you can see up. I didn't draw the flipped version, but it's very similar. Up is going to be parallel to this line. So on this carbon, my up is here. And on this carbon, up is parallel to this line. Carbon number three, my fluorine is going to be here. Next, I'm going to compare my um, my chair so on I can see that uh, the position I'm going to see what kind of positions I have on the left chair on the left chair I can see that chlorine is straight up and fluorine is straight up when you see straight up or straight down positions those are called axial so I will put little ax next to them so here both positions are axial now in my flip chair I can see the Chlorine and fluorine are diagonal. They're not straight up or down, and these positions are called equatorial. If you choose between two chairs, it is very important to know that the chair that has as many substituents in equatorial positions as possible is more stable. So you want, and I'm going to be typing it out. Let's write it here. The chair with most substituents equatorial and bigger one and bigger ones equatorial is more stable for the most part of course there are always exceptions to everything and let me make it a little smaller so I can fit more things in here so the chair with most substituents equatorial or bigger ones that are equatorial is more stable. So if you choose in between the left, left and right chair, we can see that the right chair has more has both fluorine and chlorine in equatorial positions, and the left one has both fluorine and chlorine in axial positions. So the right chair wins. So this one is going to be more stable. Next, we're going to ask whether either one of these molecules is chiral. First, we have to ask ourselves, do we have any chiral centers or stereo centers? These are carbons that are connected to four different groups. And we can check it on the planar version. It's going to be easier. So this carbon is connected to chlorine. It's also connected to hydrogen. Then it has carbon six, carbon two, no difference. But then when we go to carbon three and carbon five, we see that carbon three is connected to fluorine and carbon five is not. Therefore going to the left and to the right, there is a difference. And this carbon is a chiral carbon indeed. And if we do the same thing for this carbon, we will also see that it is chiral also. So we do have chiral carbons or stereogenic carbons. Um, different books call them different names. So these two, and then the next thing we have to ask ourselves, is there a plane of symmetry? Be because a molecule could have chiral carbons, but could be achiral if there is a plane of symmetry. However, in this case, there is no plane of symmetry, especially because these two substituents are different. So no matter how we try to cut the molecules, we will not get two identical halves. For this reason, this molecule is chiral. And if we do the same procedure for its flipped uh, version, we also see two, ch two chiral carbons, so two stereogenic carbons, no symmetry. So this one is chiral also. This form is chiral also. Next, we have to ask ourselves if the two forms are identical, enantiomeric or diastereomeric. So 
when we compare, this one is a little bit difficult, but if we compare, we can see that in form on the left, both substituents are axial, whereas in form on the right, they're both equatorial. In order to be enantiomeric, it has to be a mirror image, meaning that I have to rotate my chair in such a way as to make a mirror image to the chair on the left. And I can see, no matter how you will rotate it, an equatorial position will not become axial. So there is no way that these two chairs could be in antiomeric because we, can, we, could not, we could not superimpose axial and equatorial position. Or, uh, and so, therefore, because these two positions are axial, and here both positions are equatorial, no matter how I rotate, it would not be a mirror image and it would also not be identical because of the positions. And so these molecules have to be diastereomeric. So this is it for this video. In the next video, I might talk about trans one chloro 3 fluorocyclohexane or you can try it on your own. I hope you found my video helpful and I look forward to seeing you in other organic chemistry videos.